uh, hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, uh, basically the shared class uh, that Apache Beam provides uh, for one of the use cases at Striver. So let me walk you through the agenda. Firstly, a little introduction about who I am and uh, then a little bit about Striver as in the streaming platform, then a deep dive into the particular use case, which led to the usage of the shared class. And finally, some question and answers if, if you guys have any questions. So to start with, uh, I am uh, Amrita Deshmukh. I'm a senior software engineer at Striver and I'm part of the data platform team. I've been working at Striver for almost two years and uh, Basically, being part of the plat data platform team, I was part of migrating our entire platform onto uh, the big data technologies to have almost real-time data processing. Uh, and data flow was actually a big part of that migration, and it is a big part of our tech stack right now. Uh, so now, let me tell you a little bit about Striver. Uh, so Striver, I mean, uh, is an immersive learning platform. Now, when you say what immersive learning is, immersive learning is basically a VR training method methodology, basically uh, where you use VR headset to provide training to your employees or, uh, you know, to your staff. It uh, At Striver, we aim to provide an end-to-end -end solution for this immersive learning at scale, basically, which involves provisioning the hardware, which is the headsets, and then developing training content, and then finally collecting useful data from the training that the people have taken, and then uh, also our data science team conducting some analysis on it and providing insightful insights into it. Um, so me being part of the data team, plays an important role in processing all the data that is collected from these devices and making it available to both our customers and to the internal teams like the data science team. So yeah, to give you a little a little bit of a bird's eye view into uh, the streaming pro stream, stream processing platform that we have, as I mentioned earlier, we collect data from the headset as people are training into it. We collect the data that involves metrics, and then other information like when people are taking, uh, when people are actually conducting the training, different events that are happening in real time, and then all of this is uploaded to the cloud into GCS buckets. Uh, we then use PubSub notification setup that we have with these buckets to process all of these files in real time using Dataflow. Finally, once when the data is processed, we and enriched with some in useful information, we have multiple syncs that these pipelines write to. Either they can be GCS to develop a data lake or to Druid, which is an OLAP data store for aggregated metrics, and uh, also a Google pops up sync for if we want to do some further processing on, a, on that data. Uh, now that we know a little bit about the, the platform, the streaming platform that we have, let me talk a little bit about a deep dive into the use case. So now, what was the problem statement? So as I mentioned, we were processing events for all the training that is conducted. Uh, and basically, the events are uh, head tracking events or maybe um, hand movement events of the people who are taking the training or say if there are some quizzes through the training, the answers that they have ex uh, that they have inputted or if there is something like finding uh, specific items onto your um, onto your VR experience and then how many they found and all of that. So we have several of these events. Now for these continuous stream of events that we have, we uh, have to actually uh, embed it with metadata. So now this metadata in our case was location metadata and we had, we, with this additional location metadata for each of the device was available in a database backend. So the use case now we, that we have in front of us is to embed each of these events with location metadata regarding this device. And the total size of the metadata for all possible devices across Triber was very small because it was uh, very lightweight information that we had it to uh, append to each event. It was less than one MB that of the total data size. So now 
I mean, when we initially thought of this use case and then we looked into all of the documentation of uh, data flow that we had, of Beam that we had, we uh, w first came across the first approach. We decided on this approach, which was side inputs. It seemed like the ideal case for our use case where it's lightweight data set that we have and uh, basically infrequent updates of data because the location for each device is not updated that regularly. So it seemed like a perfect uh, use case. Now, uh, to give you a little background into side inputs, what side inputs does is it allows us to provide additional inputs to the Pardu, platform, Pardu transforms that we have. Uh, so basically, we have the main input from Beam uh, for the Beam collection, and we can provide additional inputs in the form of, an, uh, of a side input P collection. Uh, what we did was we loaded the metadata into a G, from a GCS file into a side input as a dictionary. And then this side input was set to refresh every hour. Um, and basically, it worked. So to give you, I mean, to show you the pipeline, like I have the pipeline here. As you can see, we are reading the PubSub messages for all the files. We, we basically parse the JSON events and then uh, the side input that you see on the on the right hand side, you read the location data and as into a dictionary, and you in, you window into into a side input, and then together you add it to the existing events, process the events, and then finally write it to whatever sync that you have. So this seemed to work fine in our sandbox environment and everything seemed to work so we deployed it but once uh, upon deployment we started seeing multiple issues now like uh, as soon as we had a lot of data come in like once the scale of the data started increasing what we saw is error messages in the logs of the uh, data flow job that we had the error messages were of this format uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. So the error messages were of this format, which is like some data loss, which claimed that the number of events that supposed to be processed was this much, but th the number of events which were actually processed was much lower. And uh, we could not find what this error message meant or where it was coming from. Was it a specific step in our pipeline or was there actually some data loss? Uh, we also saw that. Uh, you know, uh, the data flow pipeline auto scaled to the maximum number of workers that it was set to during deployment. And uh, the data freshness metric kept on worsening after the side input, I mean, once the side inputs were added. Also the pipe, since the pipeline was, had all of these error messages, it was not in a stable state. It would never gracefully exit and drain. Like even if we thought that our data is processed successfully and we can ignore these messages, it was never a graceful exit. So we were not able to find the root cause for these error messages. And uh, we also posted the error message on Stack Overflow and we even opened a support ticket with the Google Cloud team. So eventually we decided to move to a next approach which was another way to have sort of like data cached into our pipeline, which can be used to enrich metadata into our events. So now the second um, approach that we use was stateful do funks. Uh, to give you a little background, uh, basically uh, the stateful uh, do funks, what they help us is to maintain a state which can be accessed by your uh, do func, like for each of the element that is being processed. Uh, here, the state that we are talking about, like the the metadata uh, dict or whatever that we have is maintained per key, per window. So basically, you group your data in according to some key, and then that particular state for that key is, maintain, is maintained. So what we do is, what we did was, we read the state for this metadata from data store. Our backend was data store, and we... Um, uh, maintain the state for an hour. If the state of the key, so whenever the do func was processing elements, whatever key it had, if that's if the state of the key was available in the current stateful uh, do func that we have, it uh, and it was within the one hour window because we had set a time limit of one hour for the state to refresh. So if it was within that one hour window, we would use it and we would uh, get that information added to the event. However, if 
it was outside that one hour, then what would happen was we would access the external data store and get the latest um, state uh, into uh, into the stateful do func. So now the problem, I mean, uh, once we deployed or once we actually implemented all this, the, no the problem we noticed was that using stateful do funks for every single event uh, was causing sort of a bottleneck at that level in the pipeline. And also it increased the data freshness. So the data freshness was continue was a continuously increasing graph, which was triggering alerts that we had set up. Uh, similarly, uh, the way we have the approach, if you see in the pipeline is what we do is we had in our pipeline a fixed window of five minutes. And then whenever we were trying to do stateful do funks, we would do a global, we would try, we would re-window it, we would re-window the data into a global window, then uh, add the location metadata, and then finally re-window it back again into the fixed window of five minutes. And we thought that this would eventually cause possible issues with data processing downstream. Uh, and if data from one particular file, which we had in one window, landed in two different windows because we do some sort of stateful processing uh, while we process our events as well. So now, uh, I mean, this was the approach that we had. And I mean, as I mentioned, sorry, these were the issues that we had. For one was the major bottleneck. Then what we saw was increased data freshness and then re-windowing to global windows and then We've been doing from fixed windows to global windows, and then finally to fixed windows could pos cause possible issues in the downstream. So finally, we talk about the approach that actually worked. So the ship, oh, sorry. So the, the, the thing that actually worked was shared cache or say shared handles. It's uh, to give you a little background. It's actually a class which the Beam SDK provides for Python. Uh, and uh, this shared class, what it provides is it helps manage a single instance of an object which is shared across multiple threads within the same process. Like for example, in a Python pipeline, if you have or uh, say one process running per CPU, then that, that basically that shared instance that we have will be shared across the entire process, uh, across all the threads in that process. Now with the shared class that we have, you get a serializable object which is shared uh, and which can be uh, initialized as necessary, basically similar to the stateful do funks, like depending on the state. So that was the approach that we actually used so what it did, what we did was we we had our events that we were reading from GCS. Then we read this location metadata that we had from a GCS file. We loaded the file into a shared object as a dictionary, and then whenever what we did, whenever uh, we uh, basically for each particular event that we were processing we would look at the shared instance object that we had and the timestamp that it was associated with it. And if it was within an hour we and the entry was available for the metadata, we would just add it. If not, we would just finally, uh, we would just uh, try to refresh the entire uh, uh, shared object that we had, basically load the entire shared object from the file again. Uh, so to give you a little background into how this was done, I have a sample repo with a minimalistic pipeline which shows you the code, which reads events from pops up, then loads the data from this file, and then finally uh, you add it to your uh, to your event, and then you write that event to GCS. So I'm going to share uh, the repo. Uh, code. So can I do that? Yeah. So if you can see here, basically, it's a pretty simple pipeline. As you can see, we, we have a, we have a pub sub subscription, we have a fixed window size that we were using for our streaming pipelines. This is the path for the GCS file that had has the location metadata associated with it. And finally, this is the output path that it's going to write to. 
So now what we do is we read the events from PubSub and then what we do is we process these events. So when we're processing these events, what we do is we, we add the location metadata. So as you can see, we first initialize the shared handle. Here is the shared class that I was talking about. And then you pass that object to the add location metadata Pardo. So as part of the Pardo, what you can see is you, yeah. So here is first you try to uh, basically get the location metadata object with the timestamp and then you pass the timestamp in it. And then you look at the, uh, basically, uh, you load the entire uh, file as a dictionary into a side input container. And then whenever you have to, sorry, I'm a little messed up. <laughs> so for each particular event, you look at the device ID, which is in the event, and you, basically look at if, if it is available in the location metadata and if it's within the timestamp, as you can see, is we check the timestamp, if it's less than an hour, then you use that particular device data and you update it in into your event, or you if it is not, then you reload the data, as you can see here. And then finally, once you have the metadata added to the event, you return the event to the to the Pardu, and then finally that writes it to GCS into a file. So it's a pretty simple pipeline. Uh, I mean, uh, if you have any, uh, if you want to take a look at this code, you can take a look at this repo, which is added to the slides. So uh, we can return to the slides. Yeah. So you can take a look at this code. If you have any questions, you can definitely let me know. And uh, you can also comment in the repo. But uh, yeah, we can go back to the slide. Yeah, so yeah, this was the sample code for adding, for using shared handles in Python SDK. Uh, finally, if anybody has any questions.